World building doesn't matter, not as much as you think. I'm Michael Aguero, and today we're going to be talking about the importance, and more accurately, the non-importance of world building. World building is great fun, an interesting hobby, and useful for everything from learning proper geography to DMing Dungeons and Dragons. As readers, we fall in love with worlds like Middle Earth or Avatar, and as writers, we dream of creating universes just as rich and interesting as they are. But the hard truth is that world building really only serves to make you, the writer, more comfortable with your world. It makes you more confident in the illusion you've created and excited to tell more stories in that setting. But the reader doesn't really care until they're already a fan. World building is basically fan service. No, not that fan service. And as painful as it is to hear, most readers are never going to engage with your world building, and even fewer are going to remember it. As writers, we all eventually get exposed to that damn iceberg, the one that shows the work we need to do to support the little bit above the water that the reader sees. But that iceberg is essentially a lie. We can spend hours coming up with fictional calendars and holidays, obsessing over whether mountain ranges and rivers are geographically correct, or making sure our towns have rich histories and appropriate names. But none of that really matters to the reader, not until after we've hooked them. We've seen this in action as readers ourselves. How many of us have opened a book and rolled our eyes at a prologue trying to tell us about Dark Lord blah blah and his plot to blah 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 blah? How many of us have seen novels with gorgeous maps only to skip over them after a cursory glance? As writers, we get this sense that by creating all of this detail, this lore, that we're telling the story, or at least part of it, when really that couldn't be farther from the truth. The plot and the characters are the story. The world building, merely the stage they're standing upon. Alright, let's talk about Star Wars. Matt Colville has this great example that I'm going to shamelessly steal. Link to his channel in the description. Where he talks about the Kessel Run. You know, the 12 parsecs thing. The point behind the Kessel Run is that it's Han Solo, a smuggler, trying to convince Luke, a farm boy, that his ship is fast. We don't need to know anything else about it. How it's structured, the rules, none of that matters. The only point is that it means the ship is fast. Star Wars is a great example because it is littered with what is generally thought of as bad world building. Single biome planets and species of hats, little of which make any actual sense. The internet would be quick to tell you this is bad world building, lazy, unoriginal design. But they're forgetting the point. We're not here to build convincing worlds. We're here to tell convincing stories. Think about Bespin. What's the purpose of Bespin? Do they harvest gas from that gas giant? Is it a research outpost? Who cares? The whole point of the Cloud City is for Han Solo to get frozen in carbonite, Luke to get his hand chopped off, and that great scene where Vader invites everyone to lunch. And yet we all love Star Wars. Many of you can probably talk at great length about the history of the Jedi, or this or that world, or what the deal with the Mandalorians is. But all of that came after you were hooked on the story, after you were invested in Luke's journey. You know, as I'm talking about this, it reminds me of Mass Effect. I love Mass Effect, easily one of my favorite franchises, but it found me at an interesting point in my life. I'd spent decades reading a ton of genre fiction, most of it generic and of dubious quality. I only picked up Mass Effect because I was a huge fan of Knights of the Old Republic. I played through the early hours of the game, largely ignoring the world building of that universe, the species and their history. And then this happened. Hello there, human. Sincere apology, but I am here on business and cannot be distracted right now. You seem distressed. Is there something I can do to help? Alarmed response. You overheard that, did you? This is all going so wrong. And it is the Asari Consort's fault. She's the one who started all this. This giant thing is called an Elcor, and I just fell in love with him immediately. He and his Volus buddy are having this irrelevant conversation that matters to fuck all, but this dude and his inflection, or lack thereof, just stole my heart away. I immediately opened that codex I'd been ignoring and read everything I could find about those guys. But all of that came after I was hooked on Shepard's story. It was after I decided I liked this world enough to not only continue in it, but learn more about it. I hadn't come to Mass Effect for the lore. I came to shoot people and make inappropriate comments to aliens. The world building was just a bonus on top of that solid foundation. 
So what's the harm? Isn't it my God-given right to make as much lore and world-building as I please? After all, it worked for Tolkien. Yes, of course it's your right, and yes, it did work for Tolkien. But I think a lot of people forget about that dude is he only ever wrote, like, two stories. The Cimmerillion doesn't count. If all you ever want to do as a writer is create one world, then go for it. Make it as detailed as you want. But remember that there is a cost. Our good old friend economy of storytelling would like to have a word with you in their office. If all this world building doesn't wind up on the page, is it really needed? And if it does wind up on the page, is it worth the reader's time? Every word you spend on explaining to us your fictional holiday or why the Order of Space Monks is no longer around is a word you aren't spending on character or plot, or at the very least is inflating your word count. And there's more to this cost than ink and pages. This is all stuff the reader has to remember that adds to their mental load. One of the quirks of my own writing is I never name a character I don't have to. Writers have a bad habit of saying something like, he walked up to the bartender, Bob, and ordered a drink. Why do we need to know this guy's name? Is he important? Does he show up again? Was he the secret killer all along? No? Then don't tell me his name. We don't need to know it. It ends up being another pointless fact that the reader has to remember. We think it adds to the realness of our world, to the character, but it ends up being wasted ink. A description of Bob, say his balding hair or stained shirt, or a mannerism such as chewing on a toothpick or being distracted by the game on the TV does way more to tell me about this world and Bob's character than his stupid useless name. The same goes for world building. You can spend three paragraphs describing how this town is situated in the geographically ideal location, how its name evolved over time, or how it's vital to the local economy, because it's the only source of iron for a thousand leagues. But does any of that help me to better understand your story, its characters, or what they are trying to accomplish? Or does it all just become random information I'm supposed to remember? Don't get me wrong, I love some good lore as much as the next guy, but we have to remember where world building fits into the overall production. Our characters and their story have to take front and center, while world building is only ever going to be the background, the stage they're standing upon. Props and paintings can make a play feel more alive, but they're rarely the part we remember or fall in love with. All of you can tell me the story of Luke Skywalker. A lot fewer of you would be hard-pressed to tell me about the purpose of Tatooine, or accurately describe his lightsaber and how it's constructed. World-building, as reductive as it can be to say, are the bells and whistles, the bonus features, the chocolate fudge poured over your ice cream. At the end of the day, these are your stories, and you can do as much building for them as you want. But remember, the time you spend building that world could be spent writing more stories. You don't really need to world build as much as you think you do. This is the first video in a short stories I'm going to be doing on world building. If you want to know when these go live, you can subscribe to the channel or follow me on Twitter. For the record, the next video will be why world building does matter, at least when you do it right, for all of those who think I've totally lost it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by buying my stories on Google Play. I make these videos as advertisements for my writing, so if you want me to keep making them, buy my books. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.